Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to another video. Well today I'm a little bit excited and a little bit nervous too. I didn't check out my head unit. My understanding is, pre-warning here, if you have the Pioneer head unit this may not work for you, but you know I'm in the process of doing a few things to my wife's car to upgrade it, make it feel a little more modern. And one thing she lacks is Apple CarPlay. We put in the remote start for her, so she really likes that on her 2014 4Runner, but she doesn't have CarPlay. That's really nice in my truck, so I thought this would be a nice upgrade for it. This is about the best deal on one that I can find that'll put CarPlay into the OEM radio. I didn't want to buy some aftermarket one. I like how the, I like how things look stock. I've seen lots of great reviews, but also bad reviews about some head units, and oh my goodness, are they expensive. And there's another, there's another company out there that's doing something like this where you can use the OEM head unit. However, it's two, three times the price of this. This is about... 200 bucks they're like five six hundred bucks i'll just do a really really quick unboxing for you guys here this is from car trim home if you're interested and no this is not a promotion or anything i paid full retail for this out of my own pocket because i wanted car play in my wife's car so let's open it up here We've got the user manual. Hopefully we don't need that. We've got the actual unit itself. It's got three plugs on the back, a little Wi-Fi antenna here, and hey, look here, it's a metal casing. So that's nice, high quality. Then in the bottom of it here, it's pretty straightforward, guys. We've got the wiring harness itself, another wiring harness, and another cable or antenna. And I think if you look in the user manual, It shows how everything is wired right up. So let's take this over to the Forerunner, see if we can figure it out or not. First and foremost, we need to see what head unit we have in here. I'm sure hopeful I don't have that Pioneer, but I think if you push and turn the car on, we'll close the door so it doesn't beep on you guys. And then my understanding is if you hold the audio button and turn the headlights on and off one, two, three times, it'll come up with a new menu. Sure enough, it does. I just held the audio button down while I turned the headlight switch, flicked it all the way up, and then back down to auto two or three, four times. And then it's got several different things here I can do. So from here, you want to go to service information, version information, AVN. All right, we got the Panasonic, so we're good to start this process. So I'm just gonna turn her car off now. And then I think what we need to do is start removing some of the trim. So you can use your fingernails or a plastic trim tool. And what you wanna do is pull this piece off and this piece off right here. There shouldn't be any screws or bolts or anything holding it on, they just pry off. In my case, since my wife was so lucky and got treated to the limited with the auto air controls, I just grabbed right up here and pulled down. It looks like this whole thing is just gonna kind of pull out of there. And then there are four bolts. So I'm on the knob on the right hand side, passenger side. It's four bolts, one, two back in there, focus. There we go, two. And then on the other side, side the driver's side knob, there's two bolts down there, focus. There we go. We need to remove all of those bolts and it looks like maybe a 13 millimeter. I'll be right back and let you know. I was wrong. It's always a 10 millimeter, always a 10 millimeter. So remove all four of those 10 millimeter bolts, put them somewhere you won't forget them. Okay, all four are out, got them in the cup holder here. My understanding is I can just pull from the top here and this whole thing should just fall out or maybe from the bottom. Holy moly, it does just kind of fall out of there. I pulled from the bottom and it's coming out. Let me use two hands, see if I can get it the rest of the way out. I'm amazed at how easy this is so far. Knock on wood here, but you can see the top vents and everything come out. The whole shroud around it and buttons all come out. Now all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start unplugging everything from the back here and seeing where we need to adapt into this new harness. Because what's gonna happen is, all these factory connections are going to go into this new harness, and this new harness has a pass-through. So like this wire right here, where this originally plugs into the radio back here, it plugs into this and then plugs back into the radio on the other side. I think those are called pass-through, if I'm not mistaken. And then in the middle, we'll have this guy. So 
let me get to unplugging everything. Everything is unplugged on the back now. In fact, I don't know if I need to unplug this or not. It looks like it may just be a dead end to something there that maybe a feature I don't have or maybe it looped back up to there. Oh, you know what? This is to the bottom, the CD player. <laughs> Anyways, take just look at this and you'll see where everything needs to go to plug in. So what I'm going to worry about is taking this harness here and I'm going to plug it into the actual factory harness here and see how far I can get. Well, that was easy, almost too easy. So you can see what I'm talking about here. The aftermarket harness here just plugs into here and I haven't plugged back into my head unit yet, but basically you take all of your plugs, plug it into your factory wiring harness to the aftermarket wiring harness that you got. And there's, I only found three plugs that I need to hook up to the factory wiring harness. And then there's one plug that runs all the way down to the box here. The other side is the USB video, which I get to looking. This is the input for the front camera. We don't have, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, there's a ground wire and a power supply maybe to the camera. Yeah, in fact, it says it right there. Well, I'm smart. And then a USB. So you can run this USB wherever you want to on your vehicle. So if you wanted to plug in directly to it rather than using the Wi-Fi option, that's an option. On the other side, the Wi-Fi, this is the actual Wi-Fi antenna here. It screws on. It comes with a little rubber cap to protect the threads. So everything is really well constructed so far. I can tell you the wiring harness, the way it's wrapped up here, color-coded wires. This is attention to detail. At this price point, you typically don't see this sort of stuff, but it's it checks out. Everything checks out so far, guys. As far as the actual hardware components, this gets a thumbs way up. So all I'm going to do now is every plug that I unplugged from the back of the factory unit, I'm going to start plugging it in. I'm going to tuck this away and try to hide it back in there. I think I'm getting somewhere. Mine's just hiding right down in here. I kind of crammed it down in this little crevice, wiring harness and all, made sure it wasn't pinched anywhere here. Everything's plugged in. For now, I've just got the USB cable run here. You can find a better spot than that, I'm sure, guys. But now, um, I'm going to do what I call a dry run. So basically, that means just a test run before I button everything back up because I'd hate to put all these bolts in even though it's easy I'd hate to put everything back together and be like oh no it doesn't work let's refer to the user manual again make sure your dip switches are according to your unit I had the Panasonic so everything was off it was already that way from the factory so now I think if I double press my on it's gonna turn our car on Toyota logo comes up just like normal and how you get into this new device. So everything will still work. The OEM radio still works just as you expect. But if you wanna get into your CarPlay and the functions of this little unit here, you go to auxiliary. So I'm gonna go home, or maybe it's apps. And then Audio Auxiliary. There we go. Look, we're in it. So now you can make sure that your one thing, if you want your backup camera to work, go first things first. I would go to your settings and then car settings. Make sure your camera type is OEM camera. So that way it doesn't matter where you are. If you go into reverse, you immediately go into your camera. It doesn't matter where you are on this. So now I'm just going to return, return. And now I think I'm comfortable enough at this point that I think I'm going to go ahead and button it up and then we'll hook up my wife's phone to CarPlay so I can video for you guys. Okay, following the instructions here, I'm going to try to hook it up over the Bluetooth. Push my engine on twice. Toyota screen pops up. Of course, good old caution. Hit continue. Car ABC pulls up, and then we're back into the CarPlay. So I'm going to go to Bluetooth, and you can see it looks like it's ready to auto connect. So now I'm just going to go to my iPhone, and under Bluetooth, I'm going to look for this device. There it is. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to tell it to pair, allow it to sync contacts. 
I think that's all you have to do. So now I'm going to go to CarPlay. Please use your iPhone to pair Bluetooth. So on my phone, I had to hit use CarPlay. And let's see if it starts going now. Look at that. Beautiful. Just as you might expect. It's smooth, too. It's really smooth. It doesn't feel laggy. Uh, I can go into her music here. Everything looks good, looks right. Okay, now the, the real test. Let's pretend like we're exiting the car. Door open, close. It's like we're starting a new day. We're ready to go to town. So turn the engine on, or in my case, I'm, I'm doing a dummy run here. Toyota logo, car ABC pulls up. Right into CarPlay, beautiful. It works, it works perfect. That is great. I'm super excited about this. And of course, if you go into settings, you've got all the different settings. Just, I mean, this is exactly what CarPlay is supposed to be. Now, I'm going to take this offline and play some audio, make sure that works. Actually, let's put it in reverse while we're in CarPlay. Beautiful. We have the camera. That works as expected. I'm going to play some audio for myself so I know that it works. As I'm sitting there editing the video to produce for you guys, I realized I never followed up from the scene I just last shot. I guess I was so excited to show this to my wife and she was excited for it too that I just quit right there. But that actually worked out good because I shot the video that you just saw about two months ago. So consider this a two month update. This is actually what I can start to consider moving into a long term review. It's in there, it works flawless. The volume controls on the steering wheel, they work just like you would think. You can skip songs, turn volume up and down, and then we just use Hey Siri to activate Siri. Uh, phone call works through the microphone. It, it works just like it's truly OEM on her vehicle. So $200 well spent. Between this and putting the remote start in, this really makes this 4Runner feel quite a bit more modern. Would I do it again? Like I say, two months in having this? Absolutely, I would buy this hands down. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna leave a link where I bought this down below. Show some support if you enjoy this video. Go out there and buy this. Like I say, I bought this with my own money. I find that it's a good product, so that's why I produce a lot of these videos to share with you, is if I find something good, I make a video about it. If it stinks, you guys never see a video about it. This one passed the sniff test. It's a really good product. I think you guys are gonna love it. What are you waiting for? It's 200 bucks, it's really easy to install, and it keeps that OEM look. All right guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, leave them below, and I'll answer, or maybe the company will reach out and answer those questions as well. And until the next video, take care.